knocking at your door, listen. Somebody's knocking at your door, listen. Somebody's knocking at your door, listen, listen. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door, listen. So good, Jesus. Somebody's knocking at your door. From 2 Kings chapter 22, verses 11 through 13. When the king heard what was written in the book of the law, he tore his clothes in, his, in despair. Then he gave these orders to Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam son of Shaphan, Akbor son of Micaiah, Shaphan the court secretary, and Isaiah, the king's personal advisor. Go to the temple and speak to the Lord for me and for the people and for all of Judah. Inquire about the words written in the scroll that has been found. For the Lord's great anger is burning against us because our ancestors have not obeyed the words in this scroll. We have not been doing everything it says we must do. Everyone, please bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking, up, waking us up this morning and allowing us to get to church safely. Please bless everyone in this room, Lord. I pray for those who are not able to make it to church this morning. I pray for those who are sick or struggling right now and that you help them and bless them, Lord. This I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Man, amen, amen. Good morning, Second Baptist. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Therefore, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Is anyone glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen, amen. On this super Sunday, amen. Come on, let's give our kids a hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I greet each of you in the name and faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ the author and the finisher of our faith, the giver of every good and perfect gift. For I heard the Apostle Paul declare that it is in him in which we live, we move, and we have our being. And I just want to just uh, give a special shout out to, to my 
my oldest brother-in-law, Brother Calvin Brown down in Memphis, Tennessee, he turns 60 years old on today. Amen. Come on. Let's celebrate him. He joins us online every Sunday. Happy birthday, Brother Calvin. Amen. Our sole purpose for gathering here today is the worship and the praise of our awesome God. And we invite each of you joining us in person, as well as those who are online, to help us praise the Lord up in here. Up in here. Amen. Before I go into my pastoral observations, our youth director, Sister Toya Beatty, will now come to introduce this week's Black History presentation. Say amen as she comes. Amen. I am black history because I am song like my ancestors. I am black history because I am the face of the future. I am black history because black history is me. Black history because I am a descendant of kings and queens. I am a living, breathing manifestation of my ancestors. Tears, pain, trials, tribulations, triumphs, victory, and joy. I am the embodiment of a people so beautifully and wonderfully made that they paved a way of life for me in a system that was meant for their demise. I am black history because black history is me. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. Come on, let's give our children one more hand clap of praise. Now, you know you wasn't talking like that when you was that age. You know you wasn't talking like that. Man, let's celebrate the parents of these children as well. Amen. Train them up. Train them up. Lest they forget. Amen. This is right in line with this preaching this morning. Well, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Listen, I do not tell, come to tell you something that you do not know, but rather to remind you of something that you should never forget. These are my pastoral observations for Sunday, February the 11th, 2024 Bible study. Bible study is every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Please be sure to join us this week as we continue our exciting discussion of Moses and the book of Exodus. Amen. Also, on Wednesday, the 28th, somebody say the 28th, yeah. amen, at 8 p.m., we'll have a special Black History presentation to close out the month, and so we'll teach from 7 to 8, and then at the 8 o'clock hour on Bible study that night, we're going to have a very special Black History presentation, so we hope that you can join us for that. Please make a note of that. Also, thank you so much. Thank you so much to those of you who remain faithful in your giving. Please remember to utilize our drive and drop service at any time throughout the week. You can drop off offering, pick up daily devotionals, and extra offering envelopes as well. Also, face coverings. Face coverings are optional here at the Second Baptist Church of Elgin for all worship services, activities, and events within the building. But as always, please, ma'am, and please, sir, please stay at home if you feel sick. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Also, also please feel free to drop off your one to five year olds at our wonderful nursery so that you can come in here and worship with us in the multi-purpose center. Or if you have children aged six to 12 years old, please consider releasing them to our children's church up front. And then on select Sundays, we now have teen worship where they worship together in rooms 205 and 207. So whoever you are, there's a place and a space for you to worship with us here at the Second Baptist Church of Elgin. And also, since this is the second Sunday of the month, we here at the Second Baptist Church of Elgin love to recognize our amazing youth. Come on, put your hands together one more time for our amazing youth. Have a few 
youth recognitions I'd like to read. I would say they're in no particular order, but I, I put them in the order of their grades. Amen. That seemed like a good thing to do. And so our first youth recognition is a high five award. Amen. A high five award for Brother Joshua Harris. Come on, let's give Joshua Harris a hand clap of praise. I don't know if uh, Eric and Yolanda are they here today. Eric and Yolanda, Joshua, amen. This is a, a wonderful award. Uh, it says, we are pleased to award Joshua Harris. Thank you for demonstrating Huntley 158's core values of being kind, respectful, responsible. Come on, give Josh a hand. He's coming in right on cue. Amen. Looking all dapper. Amen. He, let me say it again. Being kind, respectful, responsible, safe, and involved. Amen. And so this award was signed by the interim superintendent as well as the president of the Board of Education for Huntley 158. And there's a narrative on here. It says, Joshua started middle school as most students do. He found his way and did a great job adjusting to a new school system. As a seventh grade student, Joshua has absolutely flourished and has shown his true leadership potential. He is on our basketball team, has attended our cooking and Spanish club, and is participating in the Marlowe Middle School Student Council, and has recently volunteered to read our daily announcements. Joshua is an outstanding example to those around him of someone who has gone out of their way to better himself and his school. Come on, let's celebrate Joshua one good time. Good job, man. Hey, man. Man, that's a, we got some amazing youth. I'm almost full already. Next, we have young Nina Oliver, who read our scripture and gave our prayer. Amen. The proud daughter of Chris and Angie Oliver. I see that Nina is part of the varsity competitive cheer team that qualified for the state of Illinois cheer competition. And Nina was also selected to sing the national anthem at the state competition. Amen. Where's she at? Where's Nina at? Where's she at? Oh, okay. Hey, hey, there she goes, standing up. Amen. Great job. Amen. Sister Angie sent me those videos. I looked at them both, and I tell you, she stood up like a true professional and sang the national anthem. How many of y'all know that's a hard song to sing? Amen. Amen. We thank God for her. Next, we have her sister, big sis. Ashley Oliver, who is a college sophomore, it says that uh, first semester sophomore year of college at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, she is in the Granger College of Engineering. Listen, this is one of the most difficult programs to get in in the entire country. And she is in this program majoring in bioengineering slash pre-med with a minor in chemistry. Amen. Now look. Y'all clapping already. I didn't even get to the GPA. He's like, man, if you can endure that, you know, you, you, you know how you're clapping already. But not only is she thriving, she's surviving, but she's thriving and has earned a 3.75 GPA in her first semester. Amen. And her classes include stuff you can't even pronounce. Cellular bioengineering, organic chemistry, and computer science. So great, great job great job all the way. And then lastly, but certainly not least, we have Sikari, Sikari Williams, who is the granddaughter of our very own sister Emily Tasima. Is Sikari is in the house, Sikari Williams? Amen. She's not here. Okay. Amen. But she completed the first semester of her sophomore year at Streamwood High School Business Academy with a 3.5 GPA. Amen. And she will be attending the U46 HBCU tour during spring recess. She is now taking classes that will prepare her to work in the field of medicine. We got another doctor possibly, and her goal is to become a nurse. Come on, let's celebrate young Sakari Williams. Amen. We got some amazing youth, and maybe if you want your amazing youth highlighted, why don't you drop us a line, our youth director, or send it to Xanthia in the office, and we can celebrate your youth on the next second Sunday, amen. Also, just a reminder, February is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month, and on Saturday, February 24th from 9 a.m. noon, 
the safe ministry of Second Baptist Church will hold a teen dating violence awareness event right here in the multi-purpose center. The theme is love like that, taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 6. And so if you are a teenager or if you are a parent of a teenager, this is an event that you don't want to miss. I repeat, you don't want to miss. Amen. Amen. Also, also, please continue to pray for the sick and shut in. And I invite each of you to join us on our weekly prayer line. That's every Saturday morning from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And if you need the log on information, please see a member of our missionary ministry or contact Sister Cheryl Macon for more information. And for those of you who desire specific prayer on Sundays, please join our missionary ministry immediately following morning worship in room 200 as we seek to do more in 24. We must appeal to God to hear from heaven to see what it is that God would have us to do. And so I would encourage each of you to take it to the Lord in prayer. Now, before we receive our tithes and our offerings, our SBC hospitality ministry will come on behalf of the church to bring official greetings, say amen, as they come. Amen. amen. Come on, Hope. Amen. Good morning, Second Baptist. Good morning. Good morning. This is a time in our service that we have set aside to greet our visitors. If there are any first-time visitors present, would you please stand and remain standing until you have received an official welcome? Amen, amen, welcome, welcome, welcome. On behalf of Pastor E. Parks and the entire church family, we extend to you a very heartily welcome. We know you had many choices of places to worship, but we are delighted that you chose to worship with us. If you are looking for a church home, please consider Second Baptist. Thank you for coming, enjoy the service, and we pray you will receive a spiritual blessing. You may now be seated. Amen. Amen. If you did not fill out a visitor's form, please stop at our hospitality desk. Online visitors may use contact us link to let us hear from you or for a prayer request. Amen. Thank you, Sister Hope. Great job. Great job. Amen. God bless you. And now as our music ministry prepares to come, let us take this opportunity to receive our tithes and our offerings in person, as well as those who are online. It was the Apostle Paul in his letter to the church at Corinth when he declared, let every person, as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank this you, is Lord. the time when we give just a little bit back of what you've given to us. Bless those who were able to give and those who had the heart but not the means. Bless this money and use it to build this kingdom and community. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Let's now receive our youth ministry as they come. Good morning, Second Baptist. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's you, Sunday. This Sunday It's Black History Month. Amen. Kids has been out to do their rehearsal and everything all the week. Amen. I just asked them, could I sing a song with them today? <laughs> you know, I did put on my outfit. And by the way, if you want your your children to sing, please let them come to rehearsal so they can be up here. Amen. But I want to tell, I want them to know about an old song that I used to sing. Amen? Amen. 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 Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, since I lay my burden down. What? Please don't sing like that. You don't? Well, how do you? We gonna show you. Okay, y'all not gonna let me finish, huh? Okay.
Hallelujah. Come on, come on. We can do better than that. Come on, let's give our children one more hand clap of praise. Amen. So good to see everyone in the house of the Lord together. Come on, celebrate yourselves one good time. Amen. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Oh God, our help in ages past. Our hope in years to come. Our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. For the hills in order stood or earth received her frame. From everlasting, thou art God, through endless years the same. Master, how we thank and praise you for this, another preaching privilege. Lord God, we thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. We thank you for our young children. We thank you for every family represented, every mother, every father, every auntie, every uncle, every husband, every wife. And now, oh God, we seek to hear a word from you. For in times like these, if we don't hear from you, we won't know what to do. So speak with my mouth. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and I, my redeemer. So much so that when we go down from this place, we pray that through the power of your preached word, our situations might be confronted. Our spirits might be convicted. Sinners might be converted. But lastly, in times like these, our souls might be comforted. So forgive us of our sin. Fix us for this worship experience. Fill us with your spirit. And then feed us until we want no more. These and other blessings we pray in your son Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. amen. Come on, let's give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. As we're standing to our feet, as we stand to our feet to hear the word of God. Amen. Thank you so much for those who will stand. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 22, there's a word I want to read in your hearing. Commencing in the 11th verse, concluding in the 13th verse. Amen. When you arrive at 2 Kings chapter 22, you'll hear these words recorded as translated in the New Living Translation. The word of God reads on this wise. When the king heard what was written in the book of the law, he tore his clothes in despair. Then he gave these orders to Helkiah the priest, Ahikam son of Shaphan, Akbar son of Micaiah, Shaphan the court secretary, and Asiah the king's personal advisor. Go to the temple and speak to the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah. Inquire about the words written in this scroll that has been found. For the Lord's great anger is burning against us because our ancestors have not obeyed the words in this scroll. We have not been doing everything it says we must do. Amen. Have your seats in the presence of the Most High God. Amen. Amen. The summary of the text says we have not been doing everything. Let the church say everything. That it says we must do. And from that text, I'd like to preach and teach with this thought in mind on this second Sunday of Black History Month, I want to talk about learning from our past. Amen. Learning from our past. The grass withereth. And the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. According to an article posted on the website of Berea College entitled, The Power of Sankofa. Yeah. Sankofa is an African word from the Aiken tribe in Ghana. The literal translation of the word and the symbol is this, that it is not taboo to fetch what is as at risk of being left behind. I want to say that one more time. The literal translation of the word Sankofa means it is not taboo to fetch what is at risk of being left behind. The Sankofa symbolizes the Akan people's quest for knowledge 
among the Akan with, with the implication that the quest is based on critical examination and intelligent and patient investigation. And the symbol of Sankofa is based on a mythical bird with his feet firmly planted forward, with his head turned back. I said his feet are planted forward with his head turned backwards. Thus the Akan believe the past serves as a guide for planning the future. It is this wisdom in learning from the past which ensures a strong future. And the Akans believe that there must be movement and new learning as time passes. And as this forward march proceeds, the knowledge of the past must never be forgotten. And it is my prayer that upon the conclusion of this sermon, each of us would have a renewed sense of appreciation for their own history. Amen. The, 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 the accomplishments and the struggles of our own respective cultures and ethnicities. Recognizing that as we press boldly towards the future, it is important to always learn from our past. At the time of our text, we're, we're, we're introduced to, to a king by the name of Josiah, which means God supports and heals. Uh, we learn in the opening volley of chapter 22 that he's from the low end of Judah. Help me somebody. From a little town called Boscoth. Amen. Now, see, that don't mean nothing to you when I said the low end. <laughs> Hallelujah. Of Judah, you know. But if you, if you were from Chicago and I said I was from the low end, you know a little something about where I come from. Amen. Not to be confused with the wild, wild honeys of the south side. I'm from the low end of the south side. Amen. If you're interested, 44th and Drexel, right across from Martin Luther King High School, home of the Jaguars. Amen. And, and, and so Josiah, Josiah is from the low end of Judah. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It's, it's unlike uh, Eric B. and Rakim, who once said that it ain't where you're from, it's, somebody know about it. <laughs> it, it. It meant something to say that you were from the low end of Judah. Amen. And, 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 and he's the son of a mother by the name of Jedida, which means beloved. Hallelujah, yes. And to top it all off, verse 2 says, he did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight and followed the example of his ancestor David. He did not turn away from doing what was right. Now, I mean, this, this sounds like a brother I want to meet. Is that right? This sounds like a person you want to bring home to your mama and your daddy. Have I got a witness? Someone who has good pedigree, good background and great character. I, I want to meet this young man. Is that right? And, and, and so as you read the story, the question then becomes, what was it? What was it that made him so great? What did he do? And why are we still talking about an eight-year-old boy after all these years? Amen. And this is a good text for a second Sunday. Seeing all these young folk in here, an eight-year-old boy we're still talking about today. And this text seems to suggest that from a very young age, Josiah was different from the other kings of his era. Josiah was distinguished from the other kings of his era. This text seems to suggest that Josiah was successful in life because he learned from his past. Amen. He learned. He learned from his past. Romans 15 and 4 says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. In other words, if God did it before, I wish I had somebody track it with me. 
That means that God can do it again. If God did it for them, he can do it for us. If God forgave them, then God can forgive me. If God brought them out, then God, yeah, God can also bring me out. And beloved, if we're going to learn from our past, then this text reminds us that first of all, we must retrieve what has been disregarded. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to rush on through here. I know somebody got to go pick up some wings or something. <laughs> I, 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 don't want, I don't want you to be late for your pickup. I'm, I'm going to try to run on through here. I'm trying to run on through here. Wait, wait, re retrieve. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank you. We've we got to retrieve what has been disregarded. Now, notice I did not say what has been discarded, but I said disregarded. Talk, boy. Verse 8 says, Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan, the court secretary, I have found the book of the law. Where was it? In. Lord, have mercy. I found it in the house of the Lord. Now the question becomes, how in the world can a Bible be lost in the church house? Oh, Lord, it's a sad indictment here. We found the Bible. It's right here in church. Lord, help us. I could understand if the Bible was lost in the schoolhouse. Huh? I could understand if the Bible was lost in the courthouse. And I could even understand if the Bible was lost in your house. But I cannot understand how the Bible could be lost in the Lord's house. Now, most theologians agree that the scroll that was recovered came from the book of Deuteronomy. They just can't agree as to which scroll it was. They're, they're, they're debating on which scroll. But listen, whichever scroll it was, it was enough to, to get their attention. It was enough to prick their conscience. It was enough to convict their hearts. No wonder the Hebrew writer declared, for the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. And the Hebrew writer says it exposes our innermost thoughts and our desires. And according to Deuteronomy 31 and 24, there was to be a copy of the book of the law beside the Ark of the Covenant, beginning in the days of Moses. It should always be there, accompanying the Ark of the Covenant. And so the word of God was physically with Israel, but it was not firmly planted within their hearts. It was no longer held in high esteem. It was not discarded. It was simply or, uh, disregarded. Yeah. If they had discarded it, they would have just threw it out with the trash. Yeah. They didn't do that. They kept it around, but they kept pushing it further and further from their proximity. They no longer could just reach and grab hold of it and, and look at its truths and to be guided by its principles. They kept moving farther and farther away from it, so much so that they lost track. Where's my Bible? What, what, what happened to my Bible? They, they could no longer find it. It was not discarded. It was simply disregarded. Disregarded in their home. They didn't read it. Disregarded in their heads. They wasn't thinking about it. Disregarded in their hearts, they weren't guided by its principles. They didn't throw it away, they just avoided it. They ignored it, they overlooked it. And this disregard for the word of God underscored Israel's disobedience to the will of God. I'm going to say that one more time. I said their disregard for the word of God underscored their disobedience for the will of God. 
They're connected together. And beloved, this text is a cautionary tale of what can happen when a nation turns its collective backs on the very word of God. But thank God for Hilkiah, the high priest, who helped return God's word to a place of relevance. And I want to say we need more Hilkiahs in the world who will place God's word in the hands of our nation's leaders. Not only if we are to learn from our past, must we retrieve what has been disregarded. But secondly, as I hurry on, if we're going to learn from our past, we must respond in the appropriate manner. Verse 11 says, when the king heard what was written in the book of the law, he tore his clothes in despair. He must have had a lot of good clothes. I got one, had one good suit coming up. You know, if I tore that one, that was it. He tore his clothes in despair. The, 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 at that time, the tearing of clothes was a traditional expression of horror and astonishment. In the strongest possible way, Josiah was showing grief on his own account and on account of the entire nation. The king was the spiritual leader of the nation. He, 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 he was to lead by his spiritual influence, his connection with God. And so in other words, Josiah says, God, we're sorry. Moreover, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This was an expression of deep conviction of sin because as the leader of God's people, Josiah had realized that he had missed the mark that was set by God. And perhaps Shaphan read to him the words of Deuteronomy 17 and 19, which reads, he must always, the king, keep a copy of the law with him and read it daily as long as he lives. And that way he will learn to fear the Lord his God by obeying all the terms of these instructions and decrees. And the Bible says this regular reading will prevent him from becoming proud and acting as if he is above his fellow citizens. And it will also prevent him from turning away from these commands in the smallest way. And it will ensure that he and his descendants will reign for many generations in Israel. Whatever Josiah heard in his hearing on that day caused him to respond in the appropriate manner and to move forward toward reconciliation with the Lord his God. What about us? What, 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 what about us? Do, do we feel convicted of our sin when we hear the word of God spoken in our ear? Are we sorry? Are we remorseful? Are we cut to the heart? The word of God requires a response from you. It's not just to be heard, but to be responded to. Acts chapter 2 said on the day when Peter preached to the multitudes, they were cut to their heart, asking, what must I do to be saved? What is your reaction to the word of God. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 7 that the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in our salvation. God's trying to save you. God's trying to redeem you. God's trying to have a relationship with you. He said there's no regret in that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow which lacks repentance results in spiritual death. If we're going to learn from our past, we're going to have to retrieve what has been disregarded. We're going to learn from our past. We have to respond in the appropriate manner. But also, if we're going to learn from our past, it's very simple. we got to return to the house of the Lord. Now, somebody, anybody can preach this thing. we we, we got to return to the house of the Lord. Beloved, 
Godly sorrow requires that we do something. And Josiah says in verse 13, I know what you need to do. Go to the temple and speak to the Lord for me. You know, that, that, that's why Bible readers, we, we remember Melchizedek because he was a king and what? Yeah, we got some Bible readers in here. He was a king and a priest. It's rare. He was either one or the other. The king couldn't go into the Holy of Holies. Melchizedek was different. He symbolizes Christ because Christ is a king and a priest. He's the offering and the offerer at the same time. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and, and so the king, Josiah, tells him, go, you go, talk to God on my behalf. Says, go to the temple and speak to the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah and inquire about the words written in this scroll that has been found. Josiah understood that whatever the answer that was to be found, whatever path there was to be taken, whatever remedy was to be given, it had to come. From the Lord his God. And maybe that's why Isaiah says in 55 and 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. He said, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And here comes some good news. He will have mercy upon him. How many of you know God's a merciful God? He's a God of mercy. And he will ab abundantly pardon. And Malachi says in 3 and 7, ever since the days of your ancestors, you've scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. But he is. Now, I know what you did, but, but come on back. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Beloved, we serve a God who always allows us the opportunity to return. Aren't you glad about it? Aren't you glad about it? <laughs> Hebrews 3.15 says, Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. He uses Israel as an example for us to look at. In other words, don't let what happened to Israel when they rebelled happen to us. Beloved, we must learn from our past. If God judged them, then I want to tell you, God will also judge us. If God punished them, then God will punish us. But on the other hand, here it is, let me get to the other side of the argument. If God, on the other hand, forgave them. Oh, here comes some good news. Amen. I'm glad somebody know when to shout on some good news. If God forgave them, then God will also forgive us. And if God showed mercy to them, how many of you know God? He will show mercy to us. I thank God for the mercy of God. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I'm through. I'm through. You want to learn from your past, you've got to retrieve what has been discarded. You've got to respond in the appropriate manner. You've got to return to the house of the Lord. But I'm in my seat lastly when I tell you that you must recognize your previous error. You, you're going to have to recognize that. I mean, you don't want to go doing the same thing over and over again, do you? Amen. Verse, verse 13, the B, the B portion says, For the Lord's great anger is burning against us. Why, Josiah? He says, because our ancestors have not obeyed the words in this scroll. He answers the obvious question, how did we get here? How did we get here? Why well, society no longer believes that there is even a God. How did we get here? Well, people no longer come to church. It's not necessary. How did we get here? 
But the Bible is no longer the central focus in the life of a believer. How did we get here? I come when I want to come. I go when I want to go. Ain't no big deal. How? How did we get here? Our ancestors have not obeyed the words in this scroll. Josiah, in other words, recognized that Israel's previous errors were caused by the people that came before them. They just got tired of setting the example. They got tired of the pushback. I wish I had somebody in here. Well, if you don't want to go to church, then don't go. They complaining every week. I'll stay in the bed then. They stopped impressing the importance of God's word in their lives. I won't make them go to church because somebody made me go. But look at you. Look at you. You still here. It's many folk that came up with you. They're not here. But you should thank God for the grace of God that kept you even when you didn't want to be kept. You can look back over your life and say, thank God for mama. Thank God for Paul Paul teaching me about the Lord. Thank God somebody took the time to pray for me. Josiah recognized that years ago they had it right. I mean, you know, we had it right. We got it right. The church is the place where we can find a word of hope. The church is the place where we love on God, where we learn of God. Years ago, the ancestors, they knew the Lord. They loved the Lord. They served the Lord. They worshiped the Lord. But somewhere in their lineage, something happened. Somewhere in the past, someone strayed away. Someone believed that they knew better. Google it. Go look it up on the internet. You ain't got to go nowhere. We got all the answers we need right here. The knowledge of good and evil has destroyed us all. We know everything. It's all in the power of our hand, and it led them down a slippery slope that led to their falling away of their faith in God. Beloved, but don't let the present prosperity hinder you from learning from your past. I said don't let your present prosperity hinder you from learning from the past. Listen, folk are doing more than we've ever done before in the history of this nation. Anybody, black, white, man, woman, gay, straight, you can go, do, be whoever you want to be. Hold high positions. Do whatever it is that could ever be done. But somewhere along the line, you've turned away from the Lord, your God. And I won't tell you, as I have my seat, that you ought to... uh, Learn uh, from the past. The hymn writer said it best, uh, and the kids uh, just got through singing. That time uh, is filled with swift transitions. Not of earth, uh, unmoved can stand. But here's what you need to do. Build uh, your hopes on things eternal. And hold to God's unchanging hand. Good morning, Second Baptist. uh, But can I tell you, uh, trust uh, in him who will not leave you. Whatsoever ye may bring, if thy earthly friends uh, forsaken, uh, still more closely to him cling. Uh, I don't know about nobody else. uh, but I'm going to hold uh, to his hand uh, God's uh, unchanging hand. Uh, build uh, your hopes on things eternal and a hold uh, to God's unchanging hand. Ain't God all right? Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ought to desire to learn from our past. We shouldn't keep making the same poor choices over and over again. God says, return to me, and I'll return unto you. Listen, today's a good day to come back to God. There may be one in our midst, man, woman, boy, or girl, let a candidate Christian experience. You can return to God today. After the choir renders this song, step out, step up, and come to the Lord.
Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I tell you, these kids nowadays, boy, they, whoo, they farther along than we were. Seven years old, say, I'm coming, but I ain't ready to commit just yet. Give me a little time to think about it. Amen. God bless him. God bless his parents for teaching him. Don't just jump into anything. I want to know for sure. Amen. And we're going to be praying with and for that young brother. That God will continue to bring him along and in his own time. Listen, everyone has a, a time and a journey. Each person's walk is individually their own. Amen. Amen. You may not come to the Lord like somebody else came to the Lord. Amen. Everyone is uniquely and fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on, let's all stand to offer up a word of prayer. It's a good day. Amen. This is a super Sunday indeed. It almost don't matter who wins. Almost. Amen. Mm. Pray. of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. O Lord our God, the one who sits high but looks low, the one who is God all by yourself, and beside you, God, there is none other. Lord God, we come confessing our utter and total dependence upon you, God. It is in you in which we live, we move, and we have our being. You are our creator. You are our sustainer, our redeemer. Lord God, you are our everything. And we thank and praise you for this another day of your goodness and of your tender mercy. Lord God, we thank you how you allow us to come into your presence and seek forgiveness. You told us the other day that you were faithful and just to forgive us of our sins when we confessed them to you and you would cleanse us, oh God, of all unrighteousness. So God, we collectively, symbolically approach your altar of grace today that we might find that forgiveness that you said that we could have. Forgive us for what we've done, for what we've said, for where we've been, for what we thought, Oh, God, forgive us of those secret things in our heart that we don't even oftentimes realize that are there. Anoint us afresh in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you today for the word that has gone forth this morning. We thank you for the reminder, oh, God, that when we stray from you, we can always come back. Help us, oh, God, to keep your word, your will, and your way at the very center of our lives. Oh God, we need you now today more than ever before. And then God, our prayer is that you would look in and remember the sick and the shut-in that are all around us and in our midst. Remember Sister Mary Williams in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, touch her as only you know how. We thank you for Sister Pearlene Riley, Father God. Continue to comfort and keep her. Bring her on in the name of Jesus. We ask you would just continue to touch Sister Rose McDowell. 
as you brought her towards healing, allow her to come to a full and complete recovery in the name of Jesus. And then, God, we ask that you would remember all those individuals who are receiving cancer treatment, Father God. Father God, continue to bless them, cover them, keep them in the name of Jesus. And then, God, those who are bereaved in our midst, remember the family of Deacon George Kyle on the passing of that longtime and faithful deacon. Remember the passing of Larry, Whitt Larry Whitaker's aunt. Father God, thank you that she's resting now in your bosom. Thank you that there's no more crying and no more pain, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the family of Bill Salisbury, our good and faithful trustee, who's now in your presence, Father God, and can lay aside his working tools, stack his sword in the sand and study war no more. Comfort his wife, Sister Kathy, in the name of Jesus. And then, Father God, our prayer is that we will remember our seven-year-old individual who came in the spirit of Josiah, Father God, I ask that you would wrap your arms around this young man. Father God, bless his parents, Father God, and allow them to continue to raise him up in your fear and in your admonition, O oh God. And that, Father God, when he's ready, that you might touch him and inspire him and encourage him to come running, asking, what must I do to be saved? Bless him, Father God, and all of these young people today as we have worshiped together in spirit and in truth, Father God continue to help us to be the church that you're looking for in these last and evil days. And then God lastly bless every visitor under the sound of my voice. Thank you for sending them this way. And we pray that something was said or done that would encourage them to go on in Jesus name. We love you. We thank you for what you're doing and for what you've done. Continue to bless us and keep us. In Jesus name we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever and all God's people did lift their voices and sing together God bless you. God bless you. Have a great afternoon. We thank you for worshiping with us today. And if you're looking to connect with a loving church that faithfully teaches God's message of hope, then visit our website at sbclgenil.org and follow the link that says join our church. We hope to see you soon at the Second Baptist Church of Elgin, where we live and learn God's word together.